Hello, my name is Suzanne Norris and welcome to my presentation on textiles, the past, the present and the future. Um, I've been interested in textiles ever since I was, uh, was at school. Um, did textiles at A-level and then did a textiles uh, degree at Leeds University. I worked in textiles for a number of years and then uh, retrained uh, into teaching in 2008. Um, I'm now head of uh, Arnold Hill Academy uh, Design and Technology Department. So I hope you uh, enjoy the, uh, the presentation and uh, the information that I'm going to share with you. OK, so a um, short history of uh, textiles to start us off. So the first use of textiles in the form of a woven type cloth dates back to over 100,000 years. Um, and prior to that, uh, animal hides were used. And for many years, there was only natural fibres, and these natural fibres were silk, wool, cotton and uh, linen. So uh, linen um, comes from a uh, flax plant uh, that you can see in the picture here. And around 5000 BC, uh, linen was produced by the Egyptians. So the Egyptians used it to make bandages for mummification and for items of clothing. And an interesting um, side is that the word, word lingerie is derived from the word linen due to the popularity of linen as a fabric for uh, undergarments. And so cotton, which is another plant uh, fibre. So cotton came into existence between 5000 and 3000 BC in ancient China, India and Egypt. And India became one of the biggest producers of cotton by 400 BC. And you can see in the picture below that cotton comes from the, uh, the cotton ball plant. And then we've got our anim natural animal fibres. So sheep were bred for meat from about 10,000 uh, BC, but it wasn't until about 5000 BC that the wool was a good enough quality to be used um, for spinning. And there were around uh, 40 different breeds of sheep by 3000 BC, producing more than 200 types of wool. And woolen garments were popular in the Middle Ages in uh, European countries. And our final natural fibre is silk. And around 2,500 BC, it's believed that silk was discovered by a Chinese princess. And silk comes from the silkworm, and it was originally only produced in countries where the mulberry bush was a native species, as this is the food of the silkworm. So we've had a look at uh, natural fibres. Artificial fibres were developed to overcome some of the problems associated with natural fibres. And a scientist called Wallace Carruthers discovered polyamides in 1931 and commercial production started in 1938. The first commercial application was the bristles on a toothbrush. And when Carruthers and his team first developed Nylon 6x, they were hoping to produce a polymer similar to that of wool, but actually produce something similar to silk, as it is light, smooth and extremely strong. And the production of Nylon 6x came at the time of the Second World War and was used instead of silk for the parachutes, which saved a lot of expense. One of the other um, main uh, synthetic fibres is polyester. And polyester was discovered in a DuPont lab in the late 1930s, but Carruthers set it aside to work on his newly discovered nylon. And then British scientists Winfield and Dixon applied Carruthers' work in 1941 and created the first commercial polyester fibre in, uh, called terrelene. And then we've got uh, manufactured or regenerated fibres. Regenerated synthetic fibres are produced from raw materials that form fibres naturally. And these are reformed to produce fibres or filaments suitable for making into yarns or fabrics. And many attempts have been made to produce a fabric similar to silk, but more cheaply. As early as 1665, the English naturalist Robert Hooke had suggested the possibility of making artificial silk. 
that the first artificial textile fibre was produced in 1884 by a French scientist, Hilary de Chardonnay. And this was a very shiny fabric, but unfortunately it was far too flammable. So the first commercial regenerated synthetic fibre was artificial silk or rayon and was made from modified cellulose. It was unpopular at first because it was too lustrous, that's too shiny, and it laundered poorly. But over the years, it's been steadily improved. And cellulose, which was originally from cotton linters, but now chiefly from wood pulp, was washed, bleached and pressed into sheets, dissolved by chemicals, and then forced under pressure through minute holes and a metal cap emerging as filaments that unite to form one continuous strand solidified by passage through a suitable liquid or warm air. And this is the basis for the viscose rayon process. So modern materials have been developed. Environmental concerns over the use of oil, the shortage of land for growing crops, as well as excessive use of pesticides and fertilizers has led to the development of a new group of cellulosic fibres called lyocells. The cellulose comes from sustainable wood sources and is processed in a closed loop system where the chemicals are reused. And now many new biodegradable and recyclable viscose type fibres are being manufactured. Bamboo that's pictured uh, in, the, uh, in this image here is one of the, uh, the newest um, sort of like viscose type fibres to be developed. Textiles are also used for technical end uses. And here are three examples. So we've got Gore-Tex, which is waterproof and breathable membrane, such as uh, in those shoes that you see in the top picture. We've got Kevlar, which is heat resistant and it's a strong aramid fiber, bulletproof vests being one of the main, uh, main uses of Kevlar. And then we've got Nomex, which is flame resistant meta-aramid fiber. And that's used in firemen's clothing and uh, racing drivers. Uh, they also would wear uh, Nomex. Smart te textiles or intelligent materials are those which are able to react to their environment and change their properties as needed. They're able to sense and react to conditions around them, such as light, heat and power. It changes its properties as they are needed and then they revert back to the original form. So examples of these are Stomatex, which maintains a personal microclimate for the wearer, Fast Skin, which uses biomimetrics that imitate nature, think of the swimming costumes that Speedo produce, and Sense Floor, which are smart carpets that sense and track movement. And then we've got medical textiles. An important emerging part of the textile industry is medical hygiene and the health sector. And the number of applications is huge and diverse, ranging from a single thread suture to the complex composite structures for bone replacement and from the simple cleaning wipe to the advanced barrier fabrics used in the operating theatre. These can be classified as non-implantable, so for example, dressings, implantable, for example, vascular grafts and sutures, extracorporeal devices, for example, artificial organs, and healthcare and hygiene products, for example, masks and wipes. So we need to think about the future of textiles. And obviously a lot of textiles is used in clothing. And if we think about fast fashion, British shoppers buy far more new clothing than any nation in Europe, and people are buying twice as many items of clothing as they did a decade ago. And this image from an article by the BBC shows that, um, shows the impact of this fast fashion. And 235 million items of clothing were sent to landfill last year. Um, 700,000 fibres are released in a single domestic wash and there's some other figures there to do with carbon emissions and the amount of water used. So when we think about the future of textiles, we must think about the environmental footprint. 
because the environmental footprint of the textile industry is now under massive scrutiny. It's one of the largest contributors to carbon emissions for its use of pre precious resources, toxic waste and the intensive use of non-renewable energy. The apparel industry is one of the most intensive users of water in the world. And in India, 54% of the population faces a high to extremely high water risk. More than 1 million microfibers per wash cycle are flushed down the drain to end up in our oceans and are proven to be contaminating the food chain. So although textiles are amazing, they're fascinating. And as you saw in the video at the very beginning, they, we couldn't live without them. We must now be looking at ways to make them much more sustainable. We have to be thinking about the impact that textiles has on the environment and what we can do in order to uh, prevent that from being negative. So I hope you've enjoyed this short potted history of textiles in the past, the present and the future, and it's given you some food for thought. If you've got any questions, I'm on Twitter um, at SusieQ1971 or under, um, you can look, at, look for me through, uh, via Arnold Hill uh, Design and Technology Department as well. Thank you for listening.